What? Oh shit, I started this on accident. That's a sign from God. <laughs> All right, hey y'all. I'm back with a video. This is a video. Oh, let me take my seatbelt off. This is a video that I almost didn't want to make, but I kept hearing the gods <laughs> tell me to make this video. And it's about, as the title says, the twin flame journey, the signs in my personal experience. And the reason why I didn't want to make this video is because nowadays the term has become so popular and misused and abused that it's becoming like a gimmicky thing, right? Everyone thinks they're on a twin flame journey, they don't. They romanticize the journey to the point where they want one so bad and they make someone who's a soulmate, because that's what most of us have in our lives are soulmates. And some are more intense feeling than others. And that's where people get get confused. Y'all talk so much with my hands. That's why I be shaking. Let me, this is going to be a long video. Hold up, y'all. Hold up. Much better. I hope y'all can hear me. I am kind of far from the speaker. Anyway, most people are on the twin flame journey and they won't be in this life because you choose as a soul before you come into this life to incarnate with your twin flame. But most people don't because it's difficult. And because most people don't, I didn't want to make this video. Even some people who make videos on YouTube about the twin flame journey aren't even on the twin flame journey. I don't know if y'all can hear me. I'm going to just grab it. I'm going to hold it. It's okay. They are on the twin flame journey. And it's hard to find reliable information out there. And that's exactly why I'm making this video. It's because it's hard to find information out there about the journey. Like true, the true journey. And so I'm going to do, to the best of my abilities, the signs of a twin flame journey. And some of these signs are going to be signs that you probably won't hear from most people. Because like I said, most people are now on the journey and they're dealing with a soulmate who has similar um, attributes to what you commonly see online. Chances are you're not a twin flame and you haven't met them. But if you stumbled across this video and you've met this person that's just transformed your life in the craziest way, you might be. And this video is for you, okay? Please make sure you like and subscribe to this video because I want to do more Twin Flame videos in the future, hopefully. Because I'm realizing it's important for some of us to come through and talk about this journey. That's some of us being me. One of us. Me. <laughs> I'm sure there's other people, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't. There's only one other person that I've seen online that is truly on the Twin Flame journey. And that's called Twin Flames 1111. All right. Check out their website. She's helped me through the journey um, about understanding it. And um, most other people, not so much. Not so much. So, let me roll up the window. First sign of a twin flame journey. The first sign of the twin flame, or you met your twin flame, is you haven't met them yet. <laughs> this is going to sound crazy, right? But I say that because almost every twin flame that I know, actually all of them, all the twin flames that I know have had a karmic, what we call a, a karmic or false twin before they meet the real twin. Now, there are gonna be people who are gonna say, oh, I know, I, I met my false. No, you probably didn't. But if you did, let me tell you what that looks like. So, I, before I even met this person, I didn't know anything about the twin flame journey. I didn't know anything about anything. I didn't know anything about the twin flame journey like that. Until one day, I was on YouTube and this shit came out of nowhere. So this is one of the signs. You won't meet the first, but you will be, the term will come up in your life before you have even known about it. In probably the most uncanny way. I feel like this is one of the signs because it's like the universe is preparing you 
for what you need. And this is not, this was, this for me though, this was during a time where Twin Flames wasn't very popular. But now that it's got more popular, you probably have to see it in another way outside of online. Okay. So I was on YouTube one day and out of nowhere, and I've never looked this turn up, term up. I was very new to spirituality. I was very new to uh, stuff. I think I was more into, what was I into? I just, uh, what was it? Uh, subliminal messages, sleep subliminals. That was all I was doing at that time. Never looked up Twin Flame and out of nowhere a Twin Flame video came on. And it piqued my interest a lot because I was like, what the hell is this? It piqued my interest. Something told me to look at it. And I looked at the video and it said something about it. And I thought I had a Twin Flame, but I didn't realize Twin Flame was Divine Feminine, Divine Masculine. And so, ooh, excuse me, I'm burpy. I'm always burping my videos, y'all. <laughs> I think me talking makes me want to burp. I don't know. Anyway, I had looked into it. And I thought there was someone, but I didn't realize the divine feminine, divine masculine. It was just some girl. I didn't realize it was usually a romantic situation. And at that time, I hadn't discovered my sexuality like that. So I didn't realize I probably like women too. So shit, I'm still discovering. No, I think I do. Anyway, and so then I excused and I realized it wasn't her. And I just kind of forgot about the term. So fast forward to about, I think, two, three years. It was about two, three, something more or less. I don't remember exactly. Fast forward, and I kind of forgot about the term almost completely. Actually, yeah, it basically was gone from my mind. And I met this guy at my job. Mind you, the desire to work, I, I was working at Amazon. It was an Amazon warehouse. The desire to work at that job was so profoundly strong. Not only was it profoundly strong, but I was guided to it some way because I remember overhearing a woman at the job that I was working at before talking about Amazon was hiring, but the location she was talking about was different, but she was just, just talking about Amazon. And I knew I wanted to quit a job. This I was doing some takeout delivery job at the time. I did not like it at all. Um, and I wanted to work somewhere else that was a little more steady than that uh more steady income and so it just came to my mind like literally like that was, oh amazon's hiring because i remember that woman talking and i was just ready and i went to amazon and i applied to a job and i literally got it instantly y'all no joke i instantly got the job I, I went through the whole process and everything and so about a month or so, I don't know. I don't know the time frame, y'all. But sometime into the job, there was this guy that piqued my interest. And I kept seeing him um, on and off every once in a while. And he was interesting. And then one day, I finally talked to him. And it was like something clicked. Something clicked. Something about him was so uncanny in the familiarity. Oh, my God. Familiar. That word. You know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> And I was like, man, I just know this guy somehow, but I don't know him. You know, it's too hot in here. I don't know him. Like, who is this guy? That's literally what I was thinking. And then so as time went on, I noticed the, the, the feelings that I had to him were so strong, so profoundly strong. And I could not understand it and I couldn't describe it. And then again on my YouTube, the twin flame term started popping up again. Mind you. Have not looked it up, never looked it up, almost nothing. All I was looking up at that time was same thing, kind of subliminals, subliminals, sometimes mantras. I had actually done a Ganesh mantra before I worked at Amazon. So I feel like Ganesh kind of pushed me towards that path, the right path. Because, you know, Ganesh is the remover of uh, obstacles. And I, I needed money and all that. Anyway, so Ganesh knows my divine plan. So he pushed me towards working at Amazon. And um, at the time, I was in a relationship with a guy. And the relationship was becoming, I noticed in myself, the relationship was becoming very, um, I wasn't, I was starting to feel very unsatisfied, deeply unsatisfied. Something fell off. And I felt like I needed to change it up, shake things up, because I didn't want to give up on my relationship. And so I 
decided, you know what, let's try open relationship. And the open relationship was not something brand new. This was something that I always thought of trying, but I called it something that I said, uh, I could see myself um, becoming, a, being a swinger. That's what I said at the time, but I didn't know what an open relationship was at the time. So, you know, swinger was my, the word of choice. And um, so, so then I um, ended up, um, we ended up in an open relationship after I had to basically fight my ex at the time for it because it was always something I was interested in. And it felt like he was backtracking on what he initially said we could probably try. Anyway, so we finally did it. And because of our open relationship, I got closer to this guy. And this guy, this guy was, the whole thing was just crazy for me. I had never experienced this type of connection with someone before. And when I remembered the twin flame thing, I went in on research. And I mean, I went in. Some of the people were twin flames, some of them weren't. But the main person I would, I would, I, I feel like I was guided to her because she's a true twin flame was Twin Flames 1111. And I read a lot of her stuff and I got most of my information from her blogs and articles. And I just went in, y'all. I went in. I was studying a lot, I learned a lot of stuff. I tried to apply to, I even tried to fit him into this and I was just convinced. I was so sure that he was my twin flame. I just knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. And long story short, cause I don't want to dwell on that because he's not the true twin flame. I want to get to the real one is that turns out he was not a twin flame. And I found this out after we had our back and forth, we were friends with benefits at this time. After we had what I thought was a runner chaser stage of a back and forth of him ghosting me and ignoring me and, and popping out of nowhere and back and forth of that, I began, I began, I was so, I wanted him so bad. And then one day he had asked me for money and I gave him some money and then he asked me again and <sighs> He asked, he didn't ask me again right back to back, but it was sometime later where he was saying how he lost his job, blah, blah, blah. I don't remember. It was, it was something like that. He lost his job. He's trying to, he's going to move to Georgia. Um, he made a little joke saying, come with me. Um, but I think he was kind of serious in hindsight. And I basically, I basically alluded to the fact that I wasn't coming with him and we were going to hang out that day and he asked me for some money so he could get some weed. And I gave him the money because I was just so into this guy and I was just so convinced that he was my twin flame and that we loved each other. And he was actually pretty attractive to me. He was kind of my type in many different ways. Like he was a Sagittarius. I love Sagittarius men. Um, he was African. I love me. some. Anybody knows me? I love me some African men. Oh my God. He was African. He was tall. He was kind of, he was pretty attractive. He was dark skinned. He was just everything. Right. But then there were some things about him that really pissed me off and annoyed me, but I always felt this pull towards him, this pooling sensation. Like I just, and I was constantly thinking about him. So, you know, I gave him the $40 and after that, I called him and talked to him. We only talked for a little bit and I was going to come over. He didn't answer I went to his place because I knew how to get there. He didn't answer. I called him so many times back to back, like back to back to back to back to back. And each time it rang and he never picked up, never picked up. And I was already at his crib and I was so heartbroken, y'all. My heart, y'all have no idea. I was so heartbroken, devastated. Eventually I left because I had to go to work that day. I finally left. I felt awful because we worked at the same job, but he had left that job before that inc incident happened. And it was so hard for me at that point that it was so hard for me even to work there sometimes. And I considered maybe, I didn't consider quitting, but it was just very, uh, the thought I could see why people would quit if they were in that situation. And so fast forward I met some other people you know I, I was fucking around I eventually I broke up with my boyfriend because I, I realized I cared about this guy who literally abandoned me took my money and just left and ghosted me 
because he never really talked to me again after he never talked to me again after that actually I only texted him one time and he answered back and I said it's Ayana never mind he never responded <laughs> he had the audacity later on to uh send a uh a, a, a request through cash app for some money I fucking blocked him that motherfucker anyway um but I was so heartbroken and with all of this I met somebody it was funny I met someone through somebody so I had a roommate at the time and I was talking to her so much like she she was getting an earful about this guy because I was telling her about the twin fling journey okay I, I was gonna do the signs first but now I'm just gonna tell you about my story um the the twin flame journey I was telling her about it so much and she didn't really believe it necessarily uh because she didn't experience anything like that she didn't understand she didn't understand how I felt about this guy and I would sometimes get heart palpitations with him um what the fuck these fucking flies it's because I got food in my car y'all but it's all closed up so they're just flying around <laughs> Um, but anyway, so, yeah, so she didn't understand it, but she got an earful about it. And then, so because I talked about it so much, she was talking about me to somebody that she was working with at the time. And that person said, oh, I don't hear many people talk about twin flames. I want to meet her. And we met and they also would talk about their twin flame journey. It was interesting. And since then, man, that was a day blessed by the gods because they're like, they're literally soul family. Like, I'm not even kidding. They're soul family. Like we were meant to meet. There's some, there's some, there are soulmates that go, we go back. Okay. We go back some lives. <laughs> And so, yeah, we used to, so then I used to, I started talking more with them with the Twin Flame journey, like a lot, like, well, like, you know, cause they understood it. And I just felt so relieved because before that I was, I felt so alone. I felt so alone because I'm going through the stuff with this guy that literally nobody around me understands. And so, so that was my karmic. That was a quick rundown. That's not super quick, but I told you this video is going to be long. That was a quick rundown of my karmic. So then, I'm still, okay, so then my friend, the new friend that I made, they were new at that time, they sent me uh, a psychic who was really good, who does, tw who specializes in twin flame and soulmate readings, and I got a reading on that guy, and I actually even asked my friend, um, because they they say they can look at people's pictures and tell if they're a twin flame or not. And they looked at this guy and they said to me, no, that's not your twin flame. It's a soulmate. It's really strong, though. And I was like, dang, for real? Like, I, I felt... <sighs> I was unsure, but... So then I went to the reader and I got the reading. I, I, I did one or the other first. I don't... No, I did that one. I did that first. I got the reading. I don't remember. It was one or the other. I don't remember. Something came first. And I got the reading from the psychic lady. And she said the same thing. He's a soulmate, not a twin flame. Um, he's what most people call a false twin, etc. And then I later, I got another reader and I asked her, okay, do I have, because she said, I know that some people don't incarnate with the twin. Like I said, I went in on the research. I know some people don't incarnate with the twins. And I asked her, well, did I? And she said, yes, you did. You're not going to meet them until eight years. Um, long story, it didn't take eight years, y'all, because anytime a psychic gives you a time frame, that can always change because time is an illusion, as my video said. Literally, the time can change based off your own decisions. Something can take five years right now, but if you make a different path or make a different decision, it can speed things up significantly. And so I... So I, I, you know, I was like, I was a little devastated because I was just so, so sure of it. I was still obsessed. I was obsessed about him because I used to think about him all the time, y'all, all the time. I got past life readings on him and all kinds of stuff until she says she no longer does past life readings because it just takes too much energy, which I understand. Past life is probably not her gift. Same with me. It's not mine. It takes a lot of energy for me too. Um, so yeah, so I I had to move on from him and that was very difficult. It was very difficult because I was just so into this guy and I was just so sure that he was my twin flame and he wasn't. And but I finally did. I really did. And um I learned a lot from that experience. So 
fast forward to about a few months, I started seeing 11-11 a lot. So this is one of the other signs of a twin flame. I might as well do the signs and the story together and then I'll do a rundown of the signs in the end. <laughs> I started seeing 11-11 a lot and I had never seen it that many times before in my life ever. But I was just seeing 11-11, 11-11, 11-11, so much, so much. And I didn't understand it. I didn't know. I was like, I've been seeing 11-11 a lot. And I was telling my friend, they also said they've been seeing it a lot too. And next thing you know, I, I, I was doing Tinder a lot because I was like doing friends with benefits and stuff like that. And I down, I had uninstalled it after this whole Celine. Oh shit, I gave his name. Oh well, fuck him. <laughs> after that whole shenanigans with him, I decided, you know what? I'm going to, I actually went on a, uh, I kind of went a little crazy. My sacral chakra was out of whack. I was on some fuck girl shit. And after I had broke up my boyfriend, I was going in. Like, I was just fucking around, y'all. I had my whole face for real. Um, But I decided I wanted to turn it off. I took a break. Um, I needed to balance my chakras and stuff and calm that shit down. But I had came back to it. And I decided to come in with a different mindset because I had met this guy at my job. And his name was Nick. I shouldn't be giving these names. But there's so many Nicks. It don't even matter. His name was Nick and he really changed my my mindset on on love and men because I was so scarred by so many narcissistic men. I'm an empath. I'm a Hioka empath. And unfortunately, we tend to attract empaths in general tend to attract a lot of narcissists. And I was just attracting all these narcissistic men. And they were draining my energy. I was having sex with a little. And it was just draining my energy. And I was so traumatized in a way that when I had met Nick, I was unable to reverse how I felt about these men because I was so caught up in everyone, every man around me was a narcissist. And I was so stuck. I was wondering, damn, is he a nurse or not? Is he a nurse or not? And it's funny because I actually had a reading when I had my reading on my twin flame. She warned me that there was an important soulmate that I had to meet before I met um, my twin. And so, um, yeah, so I was like back and forth, back and forth. I didn't trust him. I had a lot of trust issues with him. Uh, I think I kind of explained that to him a little bit. I was kind of meaner to him than I should have been. You know, hindsight's twenty twenty. I could have been nicer. But like I said, I was dealing with so many toxic men that it was hard for me to open my heart to him. Eventually, I started to open my heart to him because I started to realize he's not that bad. He's actually really nice. And he was really nice. Um, and once I opened my heart to him and had some love for him, you know, things got better, but then he had to move to, ironically, Texas. He ended up moving back to Texas with his um, mom and um, I actually helped out. After that, I was being more kind to him and I helped him out and I, I, I took him there because he was so kind to me. He did things for me, like buy me food and gifts and all that stuff. He was just so kind. And so I decided to be kinder back to him. And so that was very helpful. So then fast forward to when I, y'all just bear with me. The way I tell stories is crazy. So <laughs> fast forward to when I had met my, we seen, started seeing the 11, 11, I, um, I had redownloaded Tinder not too long after. I didn't think much about it, but I had a different mindset going in that I wasn't going to swipe on as many men. I was going to be very, a lot more selective, um, about who I, I swiped on. I didn't want to just swipe on anybody that looked attractive and I also realized I honed a skill I was starting to hone a skill of looking at a picture and reading the energy and feeling narcissistic or empathic or just neutral energy so I did that and there were some narcissists and it was hard to resist y'all some of them were hard to resist because they was cute and I know narcissists have some good ass dick <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? But I had to, I had to leave my old ways behind. So I had swipe on. I only ended up swiping on like, I think two people. No, I only met up with two of them. I think I swiped on like four or five. I wasn't super interested in some of them. But it was two people. There was one of them. His name was Gundy. I don't care about revealing his name. His name was Gundy. 
but he was a narc. But the only reason why I gave him a chance when I met up with him, because I had met up with him, was because he was he was somebody I had seen beforehand on Tinder, and I was like, you know what, let me give him a chance, you know, because we almost tried, but it never happened. We met up, but nothing happened. Because I was trying something different. I was trying not to fuck on the first day like I normally do. <laughs> and, um, but he never really hit me up after that because I guess he was trying to smash that night. And I wasn't going to do it. And then there was another person I had swiped on. And this person, when I had looked at him, now this is the twin. I might as well just put it out there. When I had looked at him, it was something different. I looked at his picture and I felt something. I felt something in my heart. I felt my heart open and I had never felt that before. Oh, it's a spider. Let me roll up my window. I ain't got time today. <laughs> I my heart open and I had never felt that sensation before. And so I swiped on him and I met up with him and it was the same feeling, but stronger. My heart open. It was like busted right open, busted open. And we talked and we, for hours, we was just hanging out for hours and hours and hours and hours. And we was talking and he was so familiar. He reminded me a lot of my brother. It was weird, but he was, so, but different. So familiar. Oh my God. Like, it was like I knew him and I thought he was so cute. He looked better in person than in his pictures for, to me personally. He was so cute. And he was just so, I don't know, we just vibed so well. Like, I felt so comfortable around him. And he was just so, I don't know, something about him just felt so right. And he was trying to make moves to have sex when the nighttime came because it was supposed to be a friends or benefits thing, kind of, at least on, you know, his behalf. Because that's kind of what I said, too, on my Tinder. Y'all should have saw my Tinder profile. I had a list of requirements. <laughs> I was not playing no games. Um, and, but, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I, like I said, I was trying something different. And we, he just spent the night. And that was very nice. I had the most amazing sleep that night. And I really mean that. Like, it was an amazing sleep. And, um, we didn't have sex. But he was about to quit on me because we didn't have sex. <laughs> Talk about this probably the last time. Oh, man, the reason why I'm saying that because it becomes very important. I'm, I don't want to go too much in detail about the story because that will take fucking forever. I've known this man for almost three years now. But he was about to quit on me. And I said, well, I was going to, you know, I was basically telling him next time I saw you, we was going to, you know, do the do. But okay. And then so he changed his mind after that because he said he was curious because I said I was a freak. <laughs> he said he's curious to see the freak, Ayana. And then so when we met up again, we again, we was talking for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. And it was so good. I love talking to him. It was nice. And then um, I noticed we had the same interests. Like he wanted to be he wanted to get into fashion and I wanted to get into fashion. I just hadn't started anything yet, but that was something I wanted to get into. Actually, the year before I met him, I actually started drawing stuff. That was something because I realized, dang, this is something I wanted to do. Um, anyway, this is something I wanted to do. And so, yeah, we was, you know, we was, we had those similarities. Uh, we had some other similarities too. I know it's, um, similar family dynamic. Like he's, he's the middle child of two boys and a girl. And on my family, I'm the oldest of two girls and a boy. The youngest being, for me, the youngest being the boy. For him, the youngest being a girl. Both of our parents that were in our lives, our true, our biological parents. Um, both of them kind of had similar job histories or something like that. I feel like his dad's a narcissist. My mom's a narcissist. I think my dad too now. Um, but yeah, a lot of similarities. I noticed that. A lot of uncanny similarities. Like, it was uncanny. We even liked the same foods, you know? His favorite color is my second favorite color. Or third. Second, third. One of them. Right? 
It was uncanny. And anyway, when we had sex for the first time, man, that sex was good. <laughs> I can't even lie. It was good. And I remember there was a moment during the act that I don't know how to explain this feeling, but it's like something clicked. And it wasn't like the click like with Celine. It was a different type of click. It was like a, I don't know. There's no way I can explain it. It just felt right. It just felt like this was meant to happen. Literally. And I never felt that with anybody. And I've had sex with a decent amount of men. <laughs> never felt that with anybody. And I was like, wow. And then so like a few days later, we started to, he hit me up again, like three days later, same thing, talked a lot, had sex, it was really good. The other time he came, he wanted to sew, he asked if I had a sewing machine, I said yeah. He wanted to sew some stuff onto his shirt, some tags that he was like making. Oh, I, oh no, my bad, that came later. This, before that happened, we did like a little project together, he had this idea where he wanted to cut anyway i don't need to just get into details but anyway he has some shirts that he wanted help with sewing and i sold them for him like we kind of did it kind of together we pinned it up. i was i really liked that that was fun we pinned it up and then um i sold it and yeah and then after that we had sex again it was really good each time we had sex it just got better and then after about four times of us having sex and meeting up and being real cool everything was good it went bad <laughs> something happened he triggered me he said i don't know what happened i don't remember y'all this was some years ago but he said or did something that he was just becoming more distant i think i can't remember what it was and i was getting a little irritated I was feeling like a little, you know, like, what's going on? Like, everything was good. What's going on? And then he said something that triggered me. And that's when the runner, what they call the runner chaser stage, started to happen. So let me explain. Quick break from the story. This is getting long. This is going to be long. Fuck it. The runner chaser is not like... A lot of people on here, when they talk about runner chaser... I don't think they give enough details of what this is about. The runner chaser is usually playing out attachment issues. Okay. Many twin flames have, from what I've seen, have attachment issues. For me and him, I'm not going to drop his name because he's still involved in my life. But for me, and his name is not super common. For me and him, I have codependency issues. And I didn't know this at the time. I didn't at all. I didn't even know what that was. Okay. He has avoiding issues. That's what the runner chaser is. In a codependency and avoidant dynamic, the codependent will push because she or he wants to feel loved. She or he wants to feel validated because they don't feel validated enough to them they don't feel worthy of love deep down inside yes i don't feel i didn't feel worthy of love deep down inside and so i desired very deeply and very strongly to have somebody show me that to have somebody tell me that to do the little bit extra and if I don't or if I'm ignored or if I felt like someone's being distant, I don't feel loved. I feel like something bad is going on, okay? The avoidant, on the other hand, pushes people away. Sometimes they sabotage things, right? And they do this because they're afraid of getting close. They're afraid of getting their heart broken because when their caretaker was needed most in their life when they needed their caretaker most they weren't there and so they're afraid that if they get close to somebody like they did with their caretaker they're going to be severely let down with the codependent the caretaker is sometimes overbearing 
but in a way where the codependent person is not they're not the the focus they're not the focus it's almost like a lot of the parents problems is put onto that child they're usually codependent with their child usually that's what happens um where the avoidant is exactly that a lot of times they the avoidant child has an avoidant parent that's usually a lot of times the runner chaser thing it's playing out those attachment issues okay it's playing out those attachment issues so this is what was going on i felt unloved i felt unworthy and i felt like he was pushing me away right and he was afraid of getting close because I was too pushy. He even said that. We had a talk recently. He said, the more you seem to push, the more I push back. I already knew that. <laughs> so this is what was starting to play out. It was already starting. We had a lot of back and forth. Many, many times when he started to push me away after I started freaking out and having anxiety and being afraid and wanting him so bad, he would be afraid. It would trigger fear in him and he would push me away. But then he will come back after I would get to a point of shifting my mindset of letting him go. Okay? Letting him go, but I still didn't work on my issues. That was the problem. And this is why we kept having the continuous back and forth. The continuous we're in a chaser. And every single time he would use the same lines. I don't like you. I don't want you. This will never be anything more. I don't want to date anybody. I don't date. I don't do relationships. I've never dated anyone in my life. Blah, 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 blah. A bunch of avoidant shit the same shit and he will always say this the last time this is the last time y'all it's been the last time about twenty eight thousand times okay <laughs> it's been the last time a thousand times all right this the last time it was never the last time all right that was what was playing out between our dynamic but there were things that i was going through that were unexplicable at first because I didn't understand what was going on. I, when I met him, I noticed I was getting way more heart palpitations than I ever did before. I had been getting heart palpitations before I met him, but they weren't very calm often. They were, it was very seldom. And they would go, it was different types of periods that it would go through. And I can't remember back because I was, I never paid much attention about what I was going through at the time. But I would feel these heart palpitations. And I thought something was wrong with my heart. I went to the doctor, got it checked out. Nothing was wrong. I didn't understand what was going on. But it wasn't very common, so I just, you know, wrote it off. Whatever. But when I met him, them shits were picking up. And it was picking up with ferocity. <laughs> so this goes, this is another sign of a twin flame. Your twin flame in you share a chakra system right you share a chakra system and because of that whenever they send or they have a certain type of energy towards you you will feel that you will feel that in some way if you're conscious of it sometimes the, the twin one twin may not be conscious of it they're overlooking it they're not ignoring it and so they're not noticing and it's not always necessarily pop, heart palpitation, but you will feel something from them, okay? They overlook it. They're not conscious of it. They're not paying attention. I've become a lot, very, very, very conscious of the energy he sends me now. And so I notice it, and that's why I can talk about this now. Another sensation I'll have is in my sacral chakra, which is in the womb area, the womb testy area, right? I will feel a flutter of energy. I started feeling that too. And with it, I felt horny. <laughs> and I would have thoughts of sex with him. I didn't know what that was either. I thought that was just a that was a sensation I had before meeting him, but like I said, when I met him, it was came with ferocity and intensity that I never felt before. Okay? I would have thoughts of him in his perspective. 
I thought I was going crazy and I thought I was making shit up. Turns out I was not. I was picking up his thoughts. You can do that with a twin flame. I don't know how much you could do that with a soulmate. It's not going to be the same. You might feel something with a soulmate. You might think, oh, they want me to hit me up. Or it'll be usually a little more vague. But with your twin, you will literally hear their thoughts in your head as they think it. I'm not joking. I'm not making this up. Okay? It's not the same as just like with soulmates, you think about something very vague and random and, you know, it happens. No, this is different. This is literally you hearing them thinking. Okay? You're hearing them thinking. You have those moments. The heart palpitations. I ran. I later found out that was him thinking about me. I felt it in my heart, literally. And there were different types of palpitations. Some were fluttery. Some were hard and a little more on a. I wouldn't say painful, but like irritating side. Like some of them are more soft. Some of them are just there, like just a normal little quick one. And I think I noticed they were for different things. I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure percent sure on which ones they are. Maybe in a later video I could do that because right now our communication is bad and we need to work on that. We don't talk to each other enough. So I don't know what he's thinking before I feel these things, okay? All the time. But I think the hard ones are usually not great thoughts. The ones that are fluttery is like very more romantic, lovey thoughts. And the 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 softer ones are just general thoughts about me, okay? That's my theory. The sacral chakra, fluttery sensations, came from him thinking about sex with me. There was another weird thing that I noticed when what happened. <laughs> I'm going to be real with y'all. I sometimes wake up with an orgasm. <laughs> this, since meeting him, did it happen... I can't remember if it happened before meeting him. I don't remember it happening very much before meeting him at all. But when I met him, I started getting those a lot more. And I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I had no idea. Because I am i never had no sleep areas. I tried to look it up. And I saw that it would happen to some women at random. But it wasn't very common that I saw it. And... I found out later on that, I'm going to keep it real, it would be him masturbating, thinking about me. I felt it, and then I would orgasm. Fucking crazy. Fucking crazy. Sometimes I get weak ones. I think the weak ones are just intense or long periods of thinking about me, but no masturbation involved or no, or no orgasm involved, you know? But, yes... These are some of the signs of a twin flame. All right. This is where it's a little different from a soulmate because you probably won't feel this as intensely with a soulmate. All right. The other one I mentioned very vaguely earlier, very vaguely, was the fact that we have similar life goals and interests. Not even just similar, the same. They, they kind of run along the same lines. And this is only unique to a twin flame i don't care what anybody says if you see this video and you make a comment saying me and my twin flame don't have the same life but then you're not twin flames and that's okay that's okay there's nothing wrong with the soulmate but you gotta understand a twin flame is someone that you literally have the same soul with your one is just divine feminine this doesn't matter your gender okay and one is divine masculine. Doesn't matter the gender. Okay. One's divine feminine. One's divine masculine. Yes, there are gay twin flames. My friend is. Okay. Or, yes. Anyway, right? They exist. So, this is someone you share a soul with. You have the same soul in different bodies. It's like a twin, an identical twin. Identical twins share the same DNA, 100% the same, right? Yes, 100% the same DNA at birth, of course. And think of that with a soul, and that's your twin flame. 100% the same soul makeup in a different person. So with that, 
and you're connected, eternally connected by invisible cords. With that knowledge, you have to know that you will 100% definitely have the same life path goal, the same ultimate goal in your life. It's called the divine mission. This is unique to twin flames. This is unique to twin flames. If you don't have that, it's a soulmate and that is okay. There's nothing wrong with the romantic soulmate. This is where the romantic is romantic. Y'all know I can't talk. The romanticization <laughs> of twin flames comes in is because people want to fit a soulmate into a twin flame. They want them to fit this mold so bad because they think, oh, my perfect match. What a wonderful idea and blah, blah. Y'all don't understand the struggle, the tumultuous triumph and, and craziness that comes with a fucking twin flame journey. If you knew, you would be perfectly okay with a damn. So I promise you, a soulmate will sound like a walk in a park vacation. Hallelujah, the love of my life has come. Because this twin shit is not easy. Your twin flame is your mirror, all right? This is only unique with twin flames cannot be seen in a soulmate. When I say mirror, think about when you look in the mirror. When you look in the mirror, you see yourself, but it's a flip, right? It's a flip version of yourself. I put emphasis on the flip, but it still looks like you. I put emphasis on this because you're going to have a lot of aspects of your twin flame that are exactly like you. So much so you're like, who is, what, is this me in a man or a woman or whatever somewhere else? Like, it's literally you who grew up in a different situation. If, if you and your twin grew up in the exact same with the exact same uh, past lives and the exact same current life, it would be exactly the same person. Exactly the same person. But they did it. They mirror you. Okay? So in one way, like for me, like I said, I have issues with codependency. The opposite, we're seen as the opposite of codependency as an issue is avoidant attachment. All right? It's like a mirror. Okay? He is showing me my attachment issues by showing the opposite version of myself so that I can see how to balance myself out, to balance myself out so that I can become more in union with him on that aspect. I need to learn how to be more avoidant so I can leave the codependency. Not to say to become an avoidant, but to develop some of those aspects, the individuality. The being by myself, the doing things by myself, the feeling okay alone, all right? Those are the aspects that I have to accumulate, not accumulate, adapt into my personality to heal from my codependency, all right? Anything that bothers you about your true twin flame or your twin flame, because true, there is only one twin flame. You only have a twin flame. Anything that bothers you about them, you have that characteristic in some way, shape, or form. You do. Me and mine have poor communication. We do not talk enough. We connect very much on every other dimension. The, the, the non-physical world, very connected. But in the physical world, except for sex, we are terrible. It's terrible. We do not communicate enough. We do not communicate enough. Okay, we communicate very well in the three in the 4D, 5D, 5D, but we don't communicate well in the 3D. We don't. He is very closed off, I've noticed. He's more afraid to be a vulnerable. He always wants to say he's not scared, but that's a fucking lie. He's afraid to be vulnerable. Me, on the other hand, I wear my heart on my sleeve too much. I share too much. I try to prove myself too much, whereas he is the opposite of that. He doesn't try at all. <laughs> he doesn't try at all. He's hardly open. He's very closed off. He's very afraid of being open. With me, I lie about my feelings when I feel bad about something. All right? 
I grew up in a home where when I was feeling bad, when I didn't like something, when something, especially my parents, yeah, only something my parents did bothered me and I expressed that to them, it was overlooked. Sometimes I was punished. They didn't care. They didn't like it. And I was wrong to feel that way. Literally, I was wrong to feel that way. I was ungrateful. I was everything bad because I shouldn't complain because I get fed every night and blah, blah, blah. Horrible, right? Because of that, I developed a fear of expressing my negative feelings towards somebody when I felt like they were crossing a boundary. I wasn't allowed to have many boundaries growing up. We weren't even allowed to lock our doors a lot of the times. All right. I was very afraid of expressing my negative emotions to anybody. If I didn't like something someone did, I either pretended like I was okay with it or I never talked to them about it. And it got to a point where they would do stuff that bothered me so much that I would just snap and just end the relationship a lot of times or sabotage the relationship because that was so much easier then expressing to them or having a discussion with them about how awful I felt about a situation. On the other hand of my twin, he seems towards me from what I've seen, has a hard time expressing good emotions towards me. I don't know why, because like I said, we don't talk enough. I don't know how we grow up, how he grew up exactly. But I know that towards me, he is not very kind towards his words sometimes. He says more negative, mean things towards me than I say, than, than, than he says nice things. He'll say, he doesn't want me, I don't like you, blah, blah, blah. But he won't give me any compliments. I don't even think he, I mean, he's complimented me a few times, but not mostly just on my nails, okay? That's about it. Probably because he bites his nails when he's stressed out. That's another way we mirror each other. He's a nail biter when he's stressed out. I'm a hair puller when I'm stressed out. It's it's one of those manias, trickle mania, and then the other one's some type of mania. I don't remember. Oh, man, it's so fucking hot. He mirrors me in every way, shape, and form. Every way, shape, or form. We learn from each other from this mirroring. But sometimes it can be difficult because I didn't realize sometimes it could show in the opposite way. I didn't think of mirror. I thought of exact print. Like I'm seeing myself in the exact way that other people see me. But that's not true because he is his own person. He's still his own person, but he still is the me in the same core. And that's a tricky a dynamic to understand and to explain but if you experience the twin flame you it makes perfect fucking sense perfect sense so i was too nice to him i was and he said that and i, I agreed he felt like because we just had a talk recently he felt like i was too nice to him and he was right i was too nice to him because he would be mean as fuck to me and I didn't tell him how I felt about it. I just asked him, why are you acting like this to me? Why, 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 why? Because that's easier than to explain or just say, I don't like it. And how I feel when he says that. Because I didn't, I didn't touch the feelings. I was just trying to figure out why. I was trying to logicify it. <laughs> make Turn logic into it instead of just, you know, expressing how I felt. And that's how he also mirrors me more in an exact way where I feel like, for him, he's not connecting to how he feels. He's just applying logic to shit or whatever he's thinking, but not really how what he's feeling. Right? And because I was so nice, even in these situations of him being so mean and cruel, he was being mean and cruel. <laughs> I was too nice. It was an imbalance. It was like balancing out the imbalance. And that's what your twin will do. They will balance out the imbalances within you. If something is unbalanced, they feel that and it's going to reflect in them. That's another thing. Feelings. You and your twin flame will always feel, I think, yeah. Yes. Always feel the same things at the same time. 
They will feel your anger. It will trigger anger within them. They will feel you, your anxiety. It will trigger anxiety within them. Some, even if y'all are apart, you'll feel it. And they might not know where it's coming from. They might just think they're having a bad fucking day. There were some days where I wake up and I'm like, man, I don't feel good today. And there's no reason why I don't feel good. There's literally no reason why. And the only thing that I can attribute it to is the fact that he doesn't feel good about something. Probably the same thing, vice versa. I'm sure there are times where I feel awful and he feels awful too. And it reflects it some way. And you know how I know this? You know how I know he feels what I feel? Because when we are around each other or when we are communicating, we if the ugh, are communicating with each other, our conversations and the emotions can be like a roller coaster sometimes. At one moment I might be laughing, the next moment I'm crying, and the next moment I'm hurt, and the next moment I'm happy and giggling. Literally, it's almost crazy. It seems crazy. And it's like I could tell he's reflecting that same energy because I think there's a mosquito biting me in here. God damn. But anyway, I could tell he's reflecting that same energy because I can literally feel it and tell by the way he's communicating to me. It, it fluctuates. It's crazy. It's literally crazy. But it happens every single time without a fail. Every single time without a fail. You will be so connected to your twin flame, it'll almost seem unreal. It'll almost seem unreal. It'll be strange. You will have so many similarities, it's uncanny. Soulmate relationships, a lot of times they talk about and who they try to lump into a twin flame. They talk about how, oh, we're different. We have this and they like this and this. too many differences, too many differences. Your twin flame is not going to be like that. They're not going to be that much different from you. They're going to be very similar, but it'll show. It's almost like, it's literally, like I said, it's literally you if you had different life experiences. You if you had different life experiences. Literally. That's the only way I can explain it. Okay? You. Literally you. And you will feel that. And... The reason why they're so similar to you and why it's going to feel like almost like you're dating you. They'll even communicate like you sometimes, like talk like you. It's crazy. Even have some slang you have. And you're like, how the fuck? Like, I used to say dead ass a lot. And I didn't even know it. Like, I ain't even from New York. My twin is from fucking New York, man. <laughs> some people used to think I'm from New York because of how I talk sometimes. Crazy. Anyway. To be fair, though, my dad lived in New York a good portion of his life. So that's a little bias. But that's a, that crazy thing is, that's a motherfucking synchronicity. And that's what I'm talking about. You and your swim flame will have synchronicities. My mom and me, we're from Maryland originally. And he, some of his, his dad and his sister have lived a portion of their life in DC, Maryland area. Fucking crazy, right? The synchronicities is real with your motherfucking swim flame. The synchronicities are real. Anyway. So, the reason why there's so much like you is because the entire journey, the main focus of the entire journey, no matter what signs that you have, no matter what similarities you have, no matter where you at in the stage of your, of your journey, no matter what, is unconditional self-love. Unconditional self-love. Yes. Unconditional self-love. What does that mean? Accepting yourself the way you are and reversing the damages that are done. Finding who you are and not what people put on you. My codependency is not who I am at a core. My poor communication is not who I am at a core. These are things that happen to me through trauma in my life. And so the twin flame journey, the point and the purpose of your twin is to show you, hey, Ayana, I'm using my name. Hey, Ayana, look at yourself. Look at how you are. Look at how you're acting. Look at what you've been doing to yourself. This is not you. This is a product of poor childhood rearing. This is a product of bullies. This is a product of teachers who are mean to you. This is a product of society. But this is not who you are as a core. This is not you. 
Let me show you who you are. Let me show you what damages have done to you and how it's affected you in your relationships. Because when he reflects this shit to me, it shows me how I am to other people. And when I see how I am to other people and I'm like, damn, that's ugly as fuck. It makes me want to change myself for the better. When I see this avoiding ass fucking shit, <laughs> it makes me think, damn, this shit's ugly as fuck. How am I showing this? But I show it in a different way, codependency, but that don't make it no better. That don't make it no better. That's still poor attachment style. Okay? So it's like, damn, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see myself being like that to other people. I don't want to have these attachment issues with other people. I don't want to think like this because of my problems that I picked up from my life. I don't want to have these fucking problems in my life no more. I don't want these issues to be burdening me down and hold me back from my greatest potential. Let me change this because I don't like seeing it in him. I don't. So if I don't like seeing it in him, that means I need to change it within me. And that's what your twin flame does for you. Then they also show you the parts of you that are great. It's not just all the problems. It's the great stuff. It's the great stuff. It's your intelligence. It's your your creativity. How wonderful creative you are. How good you are with your hands. You know what I'm saying? How good you are with clothes. How you for me. How good you are with strings and stuff. It's to show you how beautiful you are. Look how beautiful you are. Sometimes your twin is going to have... Uh, yeah they're gonna almost look like you in a weird way but like different it's weird as fuck but they're gonna show you you in a different way and it's like damn you're so beautiful that means i'm beautiful too because you are beautiful and they're gonna show you how beautiful you are in the way that they act towards you they're gonna treat you like you're beautiful man they are there to teach you the beauty of you they are there to teach you who you are at a core, who you are meant to be. The parts of you you love about them is the parts of you that you learn to love about yourself because you see yourself in them all the time. I Every time I see, I remember the first time it was really early on into really early on into i think it was like one of the first days actually i took this mug's hand because it was something i had just started doing i took this mug's hand and i looked him in his eyes and it felt like i was looking in my eyes i'm not even kidding y'all i felt like i was looking in my own eyes because in a way i was because the eyes are the window to the soul and i was seeing my soul i saw myself in him and when i saw myself in him i knew from then on in there that this was me i see it in so many ways i see me and him in so many ways but then i also see him the unique version of me that he is and that's a beautiful thing it teaches you to love people it, it is they don't just teach you to love yourself unconditionally but to love others unconditionally because they reflect in you in a different way right sometimes they reflect the opposite of a characteristic like literally the opposite of a characteristic that you have and because of that it teaches you to love people who are different from you love the people even love the people that most people would love want to hate because it's easy to hate people it is it's easy to help people but it's hard to love people that are it's hard to love a narcissist it is but I love my mother and I love my father. Despite the fact that I cut them off from my life because how awful they are towards me. I love them. You know why I love them? Because I see in them the wounded child they were. They, I see in them the wounded soul that they are. I see in them some of the ugly things that I can be myself. Okay? I see that in them. It's the shadow. I see my shadow. My shadow is reflected in, I was about to drop his name, goddamn, is reflected in my twin flame too. I see that. I see that. And so I make sure to always look at my shadow. When I always look at my shadow, I learn love for all people. Love for all people. Seeing the humanity, not even just all people, unconditional love for everything, the earth, animals, people, benches, food, right? Everything, everything. 
unconditional love for everything even the trash all litter all over the fucking ground that drives me crazy sometimes but you know what i love it you know why i love it i love it because i see the humanity in it i see the growth where we've come and where we can go i see the process of life the beauty and the essence of learning the damages that we cause as human beings are just lessons to be learned so that we can learn for the future generations. How could we be good? How could we be better for Mother Earth? How could we be better for ourselves? How could we be better towards animals? You know what I'm saying? Because we abuse and use animals like a motherfucker, right? How can I be better every single day? How can I see the beauty and in, in the love of a, of a soul, of a human, the humanity, even in the most unhumane, inhumane seeming people? How can I love the murderer? How can I love the child molester? How? How do you love it? Because you know that the murderer, the child molester, the, the litterer, <laughs> I'm throwing, how can I throw them in the same category? <laughs> the, the woman abuser. You see the wounded soul that they are. You see the wounded human that they were. You see how the lack of love has turned them into what they are. Every one of these people has so much lack of love in their life. And you see the monster it's become. The monster has turned them into. But you know there's a human being somewhere in there that was just touched. Buried in there because of the, the ugliness that they face in the world that they could not overcome. And you see that and you give them love. You show them love because you know they need love. That's all they needed. And they never had that. And so you give them that energy of love within your heart. You learn to do that. You learn to do it for yourself. I learned that I had so much love for myself that I can't be around these people. I can't let them use me, but I got love for them. I got love. I send them love. I think about it. And I'm still working on it sometimes too, especially with my parents. Because sometimes I sit there and I think to myself, damn, how can they do this to me? How could they treat me like this? How can they be so unloving and unkind to me? How? I was just a child. I was a baby. All I needed was love, but they didn't know love. When you realize that they didn't know love, you can't, if you don't know love, how can you give love? And that's why I, I have love for them. I have more love for them than I, than I ever thought I would. Because I see the humanity in them. I know their stories. You know? This is the thing that the Twin Flame journey teaches you. It ain't about romances and all that shit. And that shit can't come. I ain't seen it yet. <laughs> I seen the sex. Yes, the sex. I don't even want to talk about all the sex. Man, the sex, y'all. Man, the sex. But anyway. <laughs> but some Twin Flames, they need to work on the sex aspect. That's on some real shit. But that's because they got sexual problems they got to work on. I do too sometimes. It's much better now, though. But the twin flame journey is about unconditional love for everything, for everything, and for connecting to the unconditional love around you. I talk to my spirit guys every day. I thought that was a mosquito. I know they love me. I feel the love. They tell me things all the time that help me. They send me love. I feel them. They're loving, touching, their loving embrace. It's not like a real embrace. I don't feel like that. But it's like I feel the energy when they when I did the Akilan Deshwari, this is when I really felt that shit because I needed that. I needed mama's hug. When I did the Akilan Deshwari music and I was listening to it and, it and singing along and crying and shit and snot coming all down my face and goddamn bags poofing up in my eyeballs. As soon as I played that motherfucking song, I felt her energy just lay on top of me. And I just felt the love of a mother. Who wanted to heal her wounded child. And I just cried. I feel the love. I feel the love. I feel the love of God. The energetic force that fuels us all. I'm connecting to that more and more. And stronger more and more every single day. The love of Mother Earth. And how we abuse her. The fairies are mad y'all. <laughs> Throwing trash all over the earth. Digging up things we shouldn't be digging up. Sucking up oil that shouldn't be released. You know what I'm saying? Bringing in plants that are fucking up ecosystems. Plants and animals. We got to give more love back. 
love to the earth because we don't love, we don't know love enough. Ain't enough love. Ain't enough love. Ain't enough respect. The way we use and abuse animals, we eat them. We eat them when we ain't supposed to be eating them. We throw them in these barns that nobody sees, nobody hears about. All we do is smell it at most if you drive past it. And, and meanwhile, they're in there being tortured, kicked around, stabbed, punctured, killed before they're worth, you know, thrown away, literally grinded up to paste as babies sometimes. Just crazy shit. Ain't no love in that. Ain't no love in that at all. And I don't want to hear nothing about no humane farming because anyway, that's a whole, we ain't going to get into that right now. We ain't going to get into that right now. This ain't about all that. I'm going to have a whole video on that. That ain't love. We need more love. And when I learn unconditional self-love for myself, I'm learning to have more unconditional self-love for everything else. Love is the only thing that matters. The strongest energy. God is love. God is what fuels us all. God gives us so many things that we don't got to ask for it. We don't got to ask for it. It's just there for us. It's right there for us. And when we lack love within ourselves, when we fall from our grace, when we fall from our grace, we don't learn to be like God. We don't learn to, to connect to the God within us. And we destroy and use and abuse God's beautiful creation and where it comes back to hurt us. It comes back to hurt us because ain't no respect there. We lost respect for God. We lost respect for ourselves. We lost respect for others. This is what the twin flame journey of, is about. It ain't about all that flowery, fluffy, romantic bullshit. It ain't about... <laughs> it's about love. And when you learn to love yourself, you will open your heart to the love of your twin. And it's going to be beautiful. I haven't even got fully to that point. But I know it's there. I have dreams of this man. Y'all. Vivid ass dreams. And they're becoming more and more frequent lately. And I can feel the love that he has for me in them dreams. Because in the dream world, it's the it's more closer to your true self. It's the sub the, the, the real self, right? The fifth dimension is the real self, the true self connection. The soul self comes out more when you dream. And when I dream of him, I feel the love. Even when I see him in person, despite the crazy ass words and lies that come out his motherfucking mouth, I feel the love. And I get so wrapped up in the words and the lies that I, I sometimes am blinded. I'm blinded and I don't see the love, y'all. But now... I, I I can't I can't keep going on like that. I have to feel it and know it in my heart that the love is there. The love is there. When you connect to love, you know love and you see love. All right. But also you gotta learn when someone doesn't have love for you, and that's what the twin flame journey is about. And having enough love for yourself that you no longer accept that lack of love. This, <coughs> whoa, Lord, <coughs> whoa, this is what the twin flame journey is all about. I hope this video helps. If you are a twin flame, a true twin flame, I doubt, I doubt many of y'all are gonna really be out there like that. But if you catch this video and you just know it in your heart that you are around this person, this man or woman, or or uh, non-binary you're around this person and you know in your truest hearts of hearts there's a special connection there that most people if anybody doesn't understand i hope this video helps you please leave a comment down below tell me how you felt how you felt about this video i plan on making more in detail, in depth videos about the journey. I feel like in this one, I was just doing a quick rundown, but it wasn't specific about certain things because there's certain aspects of the twin flame journey I would love to touch on more on attachment issues, more on uh, the uh, this uh, what is it telepathy, um, all that stuff. Because oh, there's a lot of going on in there. Um, please like and subscribe.
And um, I love you guys. I do. And um, check out my other videos. They're not all about Twin Flame stuff. But it'll help you on the journey. <laughs> it'll definitely help you on the journey. <laughs> Alright, that's all I gotta say, y'all. Peace.